When you have monomials in compound fractions, you need to remember that to find an LCD with variables, use the highest exponent. Be sure to check for reducing by factoring the numerator and denominator. Let's take example one and decide what we need to use as the LCD. We see that one does not have a numerator or a denominator other than one, but negative nine over x squared has an x squared in the denominator of the numerator. This gets a little confusing when we're trying to simplify a fraction that's compound or has fractions in the numerator and the denominator. So bear with me, we will figure this out. We've got an x squared, which is the highest power of exponents in both the numerator's denominator and the denominator's denominator. So we're going to, in effect, multiply by x squared over one divided by x squared over one to clear the fractional numerator and denominator. We do this by distributing the x squared to both terms in the numerator and both terms in the denominator. When we do this, we get x squared minus nine x squared over x squared, all divided by x squared over x, plus three x squared over x squared. I can very clearly simplify this. The x squared divides with the x squared in the second term of the numerator. An x divides out of this one and I'm left with just an x. And x squared again divides out of that one. So my terms now are x squared minus nine all over x to the first power, right, plus three. We can't stop here because we have to check for reducing by factoring. The numerator is a difference of squares which factors to x plus three, x minus three and the denominator doesn't reduce by factoring, so we just leave it as x plus three. When we do this, it's easy to see that the x plus threes divide out, and my final answer is x minus three. In example two, we again have to check to see what the highest exponents are throughout our compound fraction we can see that an x to the third and a y to the third is the highest exponents that are showing up in this compound fraction. So once again, I'm going to multiply by x to the third, y to the third, over one, all divided by x to the third, y to the third, over one. And remember, this is the same as multiplying by a funny looking one because x to the third, y to the third over one divided by x to the third, y to the third over one is the same as or is equal to one. When I distribute this through, I get x to the third, y to the third, all over y to the third minus x to the third, y to the third, all over x to the third, divided by x to the third, y to the third, all over x squared, y to the third, minus x to the third, y to the third, all over x to the third, y squared. Now, we have to reduce our fractions. That was the whole point of multiplying through by the highest exponents. So the y to the thirds divide here and x to the thirds divide out here. 
Again, y to the thirds divide out and x to the thirds divide out. Now we have to take into account that there's an x squared here, so this will reduce to x to the first. There's a y squared here, and so the y to the third will reduce to just y to the first. So now I'm going to rewrite this, and it's very important to give yourself a lot of room to do these problems, because if you don't, it's really easy to get confused and lose your place. So we have x to the third minus y to the third all over x to the first, or just x minus y. Remember, be sure to check for reducing by factoring the numerator and the denominator. The denominator doesn't factor, but the numerator is a difference of cubes, which factors to negative, opposite, always positive, so x, y, x squared, x, y, y squared, all over x minus y, which is really convenient because we can just divide out the x minus y's, and what's left in the numerator is x squared plus xy plus y squared. And that's my final answer. It's as simplified as it can be.